Okay, so um, working with polar coordinates, this won't be a huge leap, I don't think, um, because when we denote a point using polar coordinates, it's kind of like thinking of it as a vector. And we've done stuff with vectors in pre-calc. We did stuff with vectors in Calc 1 when we were doing like curvilinear motion. You've probably worked with vectors in other uh, contexts. Um, but basically, we start with, you know, we have this, uh, um, you know, our coordinate system, our x, y axis. Uh, but what we do is we have, like, at the center at the origin, we call that the pole. And then, um, and then uh, we have the polar axis, which is, like, the positive x axis. There's the polar axis. Um, and we would denote a point with a pair of values, but instead of being xy coordinates, there are theta coordinates. So r meaning how far away you are from the pole, and then theta, the measure, uh, the angle as measured from the positive x-axis. So just like writing it as a vector. Um, and here we have a, some examples of some um, of, of some points written in polar form, so 2 at point 3. So a lot of times people will write these radial lines. So like we have these, you know, all the, all the, all the points that are one unit away from the pole, and then all the units that are, all the points that are two units away from the pole. Um, so if you give a distance and an angle, that uniquely determines a point. Um, if you look at the last two, though, um, you'll notice, like, giving, giving the coordinates, giving an r and a theta, does determine a point. But once you pick a point, there can be more than one way to represent it. And that's different than xy coordinates. Given a point, there's only one pair of xy coordinates that will represent it. Um, with polar coordinates, I could represent this point here, I could represent it by giving the angle as a negative pi over 6, like going backwards pi over 6 radians, or I could represent it as positive 11 pi over 6, going clockwise in the, uh, in, in the clockwise direction, um, 11 pi over 6. And those give us the same point. Um, you can also, um, you know, r is a directed distance. So if I, uh, let's say I'll take this, this um, the, the middle figure here, uh, and this point here, this point could be negative 3 comma negative pi over 6, meaning take that point at 3 negative pi over 6, and when you make r negative, it just goes in the opposite direction. It's like revolving at 180 degrees or pi radians around. Um, and that would be the same as 3 comma, what would that be, 5 pi over 6? So there's more than one way that you can represent a given point. When you give the coordinates, the polar coordinates, like we know exactly where that point is, but if you just physically pick the point, there can be more than one way. There can be many, many ways, in fact, because I could take the same point and just keep adding 2 pi, right? There can be infinitely many angles I could give that give the same point. Um, we're going to practice a little bit with just converting coordinates between rectangular and polar. We've got some hopefully familiar formulas here. Um, these, we may not have worked with them in, in a, for a little while, but um, they come all directly from the vector stuff we did in pre-calc. So, you know, if I had, I'm going to go up here in the top margin, make my little x, y axis. So let's say this is rectangular coordinates x, y, and then it is a distance r from the pole and at an angle theta so that this uh, distance across the bottom is x, this distance here is y. So um, if you use SOHCAHTOA, the sine says sine theta is y over r, and that means that y is r sine theta. And cosine on that right triangle that we have here tells us that cosine theta is x over r, and so x is r cosine theta. And those are the formulas that appear on the left side of theorem 37. 
Um, and then, and that's how we go from polar to um, rectangular coordinates. Uh, if I had the rectangular coordinates, I can just use the fact that tan theta is y over x. Again, that's Sokotoa, opposite over adjacent. Um, and then Pythagoras, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And these are the formulas as they appear in this theorem. Um, so here we've given, we'll be given some polar coordinates. We're going to find some rectangular coordinates. So r theta is 2 pi. So x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. I'm just going to plug some of these values in. So 2 cosine pi. What's cosine pi? Negative 1. Negative 1. This is negative 2. And then we have 2 sine pi. What's sine pi? Zero. So this is the point two zero. So now that we're working with both polar and, and um, rectangular coordinates, you'll notice that we kind of specify. This is my r theta point at the top. Here's and then I'm giving my answer as an x y point, and I specify. Yeah. Did you make it positive for some reason? Oh no no I no I made it. Uh, the reason was uh, that it's a mistake. Yes. Um, now, so we get the coordinates negative 2, 0. If we visualize this, we're perhaps not surprised. We're going two units out at pi radians. Pi radians is 180 degrees at two units out. So that should be the point negative 2, 0. Um, and so for this next one, uh, the polar coordinates are root 3 and pi over 6. So again, I'm just starting at x equals r cosine theta y equals r sine theta, and then we plug stuff in. So r cosine pi over 6, oh, whoops, we know what it is, root 3 cosine pi over 6. And root 3 sine pi over 6. Cosine pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So that gives us 3 halves. And sine pi over 6 is a half. So that gives us root 3 over 2 for y. And there's our rectangular coordinates. Given a set of polar coordinates, there will be only one set of rectangular coordinates that fits uh, that point. Um, questions so far? Okay. Going the other way, um, we want to find a set of polar coordinates for the points given below. I often start these ones um, by just sketching. You know, so. Um, it doesn't have to be super accurate, but at the point negative 1, 1, that's here. So I need to find r, and I need to find theta. Theta is always an angle measured from the positive x-axis. Sort of imagine this as a nice right triangle. Maybe we'll find this angle alpha first that allows us to use Sokotoa. Um, but if we want r, we we'll just start out by using Pythagoras. So r is the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared. So we get root 2. And I'm going to scroll back to the previous page real quick in this um, theorem. Uh, when we go from rectangular to polar, they say, oh, tan theta is y over x. Of course, we want to use that to find theta. Um, so tan theta equals y over x. That's true no matter what theta is. 
Um, we are probably pretty familiar with the fact that our calculators are a little finicky when we use the inverse tan function. So that's why we always state the result in this way. Um, what I'll do is just say alpha is arctan of y over x. Um, and the reason I'm using alpha here and not theta is that arctan only spits out um, an angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. It never give you, will never give you a, a, an angle in the second or third quadrant. So um, I usually start out just by finding this reference angle. So I'm going to put actually little absolute values. Plug in positives into that arctan. And then make the adjustments that we know we need to make. That reference angle is always in quadrant 1. So going back to the example that we're on, when we find that reference angle alpha, um, we're going to then um, subtract that from pi radians. So alpha is arctan of 1 over 1. So arctan of 1 is pi over 4, and that means that theta is pi minus pi over 4, or 3 pi over 4. This, is, this gives us what I think of as like the, the simplest answer to this problem, like if we're writing, if we're figuring out the polar coordinates, certainly the point uh, negative 1, 1 in rectangular coordinates is equal to the point root 2, comma, 3 pi over 4. But as we mentioned in the beginning, the way that you can represent a point in polar coordinates is not unique. So there it is at, at positive 3 pi over 4. I might, uh, we could also represent that as root 2, comma, negative 5 pi over 4. Right, like going backwards 5 pi over 4, or I could add 2 pi to 3 pi over 4, or, you know, what, have the angle going this way and then make R negative, and that would also, there's like infinitely many ways. There's a pattern to those infinitely many ways. We can't just be haphazard about it. Um, but I usually just kind of pick what seems like the simplest set um, of coordinates. How's that one? Um, one of the reasons why I sketch it first is because sometimes the, the answer is easy, and that's okay. So in rectangular coordinates, this is the point 0, 2. What, what's the polar coordinates? I mean, you can use the formulas and get them. Um, well, you can at least get R using the formulas, but... We, we don't really need any formulas here. What's R? Two. What's theta? Pi over, two. Pi over 2. Sometimes it's easy and that's OK. Um, kind of similar to the parametric equations, you can get um, funky looking graphs with polar equations. Um, so we're going to start, you know, we're going to we're going to take a few of these equations and see how we can reason out what their graphs should look like, um, and then and then I'll show you how to get the calculators to plot out some of the more complicated ones. Um, so the first one, let's see, it says describe the graph and confirm each description com by converting to a rectangular equation. So if r is equal to 2, right, there's no theta involved in that, right? So regardless of what theta is, r is always 2. These points are always 2 units from the pole. What kind of figure is that? Circle. Yeah, it's a circle of radius 2. Centered at the origin. Um, 
Um, and then it says confirm by converting to a rectangular equation. I mean, um, what is the equation, the rectangular equation for this? Well, that's the polar equation, r equals 2. What's the rectangular? How do we, and actually I guess maybe a more helpful way to ask that question is, how do we usually write the equation of a circle of radius 2 centered at the origin? So R times cosine theta will give us the x coordinate of a of a point. No, uh, uh, two pi r. Nope. So R squared is equal to two x plus two. Nope. So the the equation is x squared plus y squared equals R squared. And, and we sort of reminded of that a little bit back here in uh, Theorem 37. That's one of the ways we find, um, one of the ways that we find uh, or do conversions of coordinates. Okay. Um, so now this next one, theta is a constant. So no matter what r is, theta is always pi over 3. So these would be all points. That make an angle of pi over 3. With the polar axis. So the angle's constant. What kind of... What does that look like? Just an infinite line. Yeah, it's a line. It's a straight line that goes to the origin. So, again, if I go back, if you look at the theorem 37, um, an equation that relates the angle with the coordinates x and y, uh, is the uh, tan theta is equal to y over x. So tan of pi over 3 is equal to y over x. That means that y is equal to tan pi over 3 times x, which is, what's tangent of pi over 3? I'm going to go to the it's root 3 over 2 divided by half, so that's root 3 times x. There's the equation in rectangular form. So we did one with a constant r, we did one with a constant theta. Now we have one where there's both r and theta involved, right? So neither are constant. r is equal to secant theta. Um, and if we start with this, it's not really obvious what this should look like, but I'm going to make one move that will be, I think you'll, you know, it's, it's not a hard move to make, but it might not be obvious that we would do it. Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine theta because it's the reciprocal of secant. So um, so I get r cosine theta is equal to, so it's, because it's the reciprocal of secant, secant times cosine is just equal to 1. Where have we seen r cosine theta before? That's the x-coordinate. So this is the equation, x equals 1. So r is equal to secant theta is the vertical line, x equals 1. Um, questions so far? 
Okay. Um, now, some a lot of the other more interesting graphs are a lot harder to kind of just reason out. So I'm going to show you how we can use the calculator to do this. Um, so we last time we looked at uh, putting our calculator in parametric mode. Uh, we can also put our calculator in polar mode. So that's what we're going to do. And hit the mode button. Go down till it says polar. And then when I hit y equals, uh, we can see that our options are to put in functions for r1, r2, r3, and not y, or xt and yt. Um, so uh, they're, they're not a pair of equations anymore. It's just a single equation for each curve. But now if I hit, so that we're going we're gonna to graph the curve 2 cosine 3 theta. Um, so 2 times cosine, and it's 3 theta. Now if I hit this variable button next to alpha, it's automatically a theta because it knows it's in polar form. And I'm going to hit the window button. So like usual, we're going to set our x min and max and our y min and max, like just how big, we physically big we want the window. But then we also need to set a range from, for theta. It's, that's kind of like the same thing as when we set the ranges for t and how often it stops to make a point. There, that theta step is doing the same thing. So here we can, uh, let's see, I guess I'm just going to try doing from 0 to 2 pi. And that looks like it's maybe pi over 12 or something. I'm going to try and see what that looks like. Oh, I didn't switch my x and y window. That's, that's an incomplete picture. Yeah, it doesn't look like a rose at all. <laughs> Whoever named it like doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, all right, so let me try minus 5 to 5 on both. Oh, now that's a beautiful rose. Uh, my my window's kind of big. I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe cut it. Uh, go to zero to uh, two and a half. Negative two and a half to two and a half. All right, so. And then here's where I try to draw it. It never goes very well. <laughs> like, the, it's hard to sketch. Something like that. That's the best I can do. Now that we're looking at a beautiful rose curve, though, um, now we can think about calculus. Of course, when we're looking at a curve on a on on a plane, you know, naturally, what comes to everybody's mind is, well, you know, what's the uh, what's the slope of that tangent line or that tangent line, or can I use it to determine where I might have, you know, vertical or horizontal tangents? Um, I know that's what you're all thinking. Yes, exactly. So, um, I don't want to wait, make you wait any longer to get there. So, um, polar curves are kind of like another flavor of the parametric curves. Not like they're different, obviously, because we don't need a pair of equations for each curve. But we are introducing a new parameter. When we're finding, when we are interested in the slope of a tangent line, that is a dy dx. Regardless, even if our curve is you know, r as a function of theta, if we want a slope of a line, that's a change in y over a change in x. And so when we find dy dx, just like we did with the parametric, it's dy d theta over dx d theta, where we just think of the parameter as theta now and not t. And then the other side of that equation looks like a, looks like a whole formula to memorize or something, and it's not really. I mean, if you love memorizing stuff, go for it. But all we do there, all we're doing here, is using the product rule 
on the equations x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So like up top, dy d theta. So y is equal to r times sine theta. So we're going to have r times the derivative of this, which is cosine theta, plus r prime, which is f prime theta, times just sine theta. Like we're just applying the product rule to those products that give us the x and y coordinates. We can detect vertical and horizontal tangents. So horizontal <laughs> tangents are where dy d theta is 0. And um, as long as dx d theta is not 0. And we get vertical tangents when dx d theta is 0, as long as dy d theta is not also 0 at the same time. If they're both zero, places where they're both 0, um, dy dx is undefined. So we're going to do some examples. We're going to find vertical and horizontal tangents for r equals sine theta. And, you know, I don't know, maybe it's uh, worth it to just see what it looks like. R equals, was it sine theta? Yeah. Okay. Looks like maybe a circle kind of sitting on top of the x-axis. Um, so it looks like we're going to find horizontal tangents at the bottom and at the top and vertical tangents on the left and the right. We should find two vertical tangents, two horizontal tangents. So let's start. So we start by just finding or expressing that curve, r equals sine theta, like as a pair of parametric equations. Like we get that by using x equals r sine theta, or x equals r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. So we'll get the parametric form And if x is r cosine theta, then since r is equal to sine theta, that means that x is sine theta cosine theta. So now I have x expressed just as a function of theta. Um, you could go ahead and use the product rule there, just kind of like it says on the theorem on, in, on the last page. Uh, but sometimes it can be useful to use a trig identity. Sine theta, cosine theta, you could use a double angle form for sine, and that's 1 half sine 2 theta. So there's our x. So we can find dx d theta. 1 half times cosine 2 theta times 2 or just cosine 2 theta. And before we kind of detect those horizontal vertical tangents, I'm going to go ahead and um, work with the y equation. So y is r sine theta. And again, r is sine theta um, above as given, so this is uh, sine squared theta. So finding dy d theta now, we get 2 sine theta cosine theta. Or that's the same as using the double angle again, uh, sine 2 theta. So to figure out where we have vertical and horizontal tangents, we would just want to know where each of these is 0. We get our vertical tangents when dx d theta is 0. So let's solve that one on the left first. If this is 0, that means that cosine 2 theta is 0. Now we're solving a trigonometric equation, um, so that often means there's multiple solutions. They told us at the very beginning, I'm going to scroll up, they told us that um, theta is between 0 and pi. Now, since we use the double angle formulas, both of our arguments for the, the arguments for both of our derivatives are 2 theta. So that means that 
theta is going to, uh, sorry, 2 theta is going to go between 0 and 2 pi. So if I'm looking to see where is 2 theta equal to 0, um, the unit circle will tell us that. That's at, uh, what, the top and the bottom of the circle. So that's pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 2, because we need to let it go around twice. Oh, wait. 2 theta is between 0 and 2 pi, not 4 pi. So just the first two. Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And if that's what 2 pi is, then we'll divide by 2 to get, um, or sorry, if that's what 2 theta is, that's, we'll divide by 2 to get uh, theta. Pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Now I don't want to assume that I'm going to have vertical tangents there just yet, because remember, uh, if they're both zero, then we can't draw any conclusions, so I want to check to see where the dy d theta is equal to zero first. Sine is equal to zero at zero and pi, so it'll be zero and pi. And then we get 0 and pi over 2, right after we divide by 2 to solve for theta. So notice we didn't get any doubled values, like, um, like the places that made dx d theta equal to 0 and dy d theta equal to 0, none of them are the same. So that means that both those values on the left side both of those will give us vertical tangents. Both the values on the right side, both of those will give us horizontal tangents. So what we want to do now is find the values of r that go with each of these. So I could say at this point we have a vertical tangent or a horizontal tangent. And to find r, we're going to use the original function as given. They told us at the beginning that r equals sine theta. That's what defines this curve. So when theta equals, say, pi over 4, that's our first value. That means that r is equal to sine pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. And when theta is equal to 3 pi over 4, then r is equal to sine 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, that's still a positive root 2 over 2. And that means that we have vertical tangents. at what root 2 over 2 comma pi over 4 and root 2 over 2 comma 3 pi over 4 and if we like we could actually find the equation of the those vertical tangent lines in rectangular form so x equals r sine theta. So that would be root 2 over 2 times sine pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, or 1 half. And then root 2 over 2 sine 3 pi over 4, that'll give you a negative 1 half. How's that so far? The, the vertical tangents um, or sorry, that, that was the vertical tangents. With the horizontal tangents, we're just going to come up here and do the same thing. We know that we get horizontal tangents at both those values of theta, so we're going to find r by using the given uh, equation, the, the equation that defines this curve, r equals um, sine theta. So at theta equals 0, r 
equals sine of 0, which is 0. And at theta equals pi over 2, r is sine pi over 2, which is 1. So we get horizontal tangents at, let's see, r theta. So that would be 0, 0 at that point, and at 1 pi over 2. And we can again, we could find the equations of those lines in the rectangular form. Um, y equals r sine. The, oh, you know what? I use sine over here. Did anybody catch that? X. Yeah. I mean, w because it's pi over 4, we're going to get the same answer. But um, this should be cosine. My apologies. Y is R sine theta. So let's see, for this one, we get 0 times sine of 0, and that's just Y equals 0. And here we get 1 times sine pi over 2, and that's just 1, Y equals 1. Fun. On the graph, it was just that little circle that you had. Yeah, um, like this is what that graph. Because of the this, the aspect ratio on the calculator, it looks more like an oval here. But um, it, I think it actually is a circle. And and there's our x equals one half and negative one half on either side, and y equals zero, y equals one that we found. Should we do another? Probably. OK, we, again, we're going to find vertical and horizontal tangents. So maybe, maybe, let's see what this looks like. Oh, I got to expand my window. Okay, so that's an interesting shape. Looks like we should have a vertical tangent over here and here. Like that's probably tangent at both those points, maybe, and then um, and then a horizontal tangent at the top and the bottom. Let's see what we find. Um, all right. So again, we'll start the same way. Let's get the parametric forms, the parametric equations. So x is r cosine theta. So that's r is 2, 1 minus cosine theta times cosine theta. I think I'll expand everything. So 2 cosine theta minus 2 cosine squared theta. And I just I want to expand everything because I feel like it's easier to take the derivative that way. I don't use the product rule. If you like the product rule, you know, definitely go for it. Um, if we differentiate, we get, what, minus 2 sine theta. And then this will be minus 4 cosine theta times negative sine theta. So negative 2 sine theta plus 4 sine theta cosine theta. So this is uh, dx d theta. Hold on. This is x. This is dx d theta. I just committed a cardinal sin. I don't want to state that two things are equal when they're not. And we're going to figure out where that's 0. So 
if I'm solving that equation, uh, now I'm going to factor, I think. I'm going to take out a 2 sine theta. And then we have minus 1 plus 2 cosine theta. Um, the nice thing, because we're interested where this is equal to 0, we could just set each of the factors equal to 0. So dx d theta equals 0 means that 2 sine theta is 0, or what, 2 cosine theta would have to be 1. So 2 sine theta equals 0 happens when sine is equal to 0, and they didn't give us a range on theta, so I'm just going to assume that it's, um, I don't know, like 0 to 2 pi. Usually, uh, usually we go from 0 up to and not including 2 pi, like just get one go around the circle. So I'll make that assumption here. So uh, two, uh, sine theta is equal to 0 when theta is 0 and pi. And then 2 cosine theta equals 1 means that cosine theta is a half. And cosine is equal to a half. I'm going to look at my unit circle here. When uh, theta is pi over 3 um, and 5 pi over 3. So we found all the values of theta that make dx d theta equal to 0. So those are potential places where we'll get a vertical tangent. Um, I'm not going to declare them as all vertical tangents right now because I need to check that we haven't doubled up any of those values when we solve for dy d theta equal to 0. So let's go and do that. Um, are there questions on what we've done so far? All right, so y is r sine theta, and so that's 2, 1 minus cosine theta, sine theta. Now, I could distribute like I did before, but it won't allow me to avoid, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll really allow me to avoid the product rule very well. So I'm just going to jump in. with derivatives. So gf prime would be so that'd be sine theta times and then we have two the derivative would be oh sine theta right because the derivative of cosine is negative sine and so when you take uh, the derivative of 1 minus cosine, that's a positive sign. And then plus f g prime. I think I'll take out the 2 just to make it simple. And then inside we have sine squared theta plus cosine theta minus cosine squared theta. Solving that is a bit more complicated because it doesn't seem like we have a common factor to take out. We've got two different functions. We want to set this equal to 0. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to write it all in terms of one function. So I'm going to use Pythagoras and rewrite that sine squared. It's 1 minus cosine squared. So what we have now is a minus 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine theta plus 1. I'm going to take out the negative. 
So we're going to minus 2 times and then uh, 2 cosine squared theta minus cosine minus 1. This is actually progress, I think, because now that's a quadratic in cosine. And I think we can use it to at least figure out what cosine is. Yeah? How do you get the plus 1 again? Um, because you got it? Okay. Okay, so this is a quadratic. Um, does this factor? So that's a plus cosine minus two cosine. Yeah, I think that works. Great. Okay, so now when we, that's our dy d theta. So if we set dy d theta equal to zero, that means we just have to set each of these factors equal to zero. So two cosine theta plus one equals zero, or cosine theta minus one equals zero. That'll get us values for cosine, which can get us values for theta. So uh, for the first one, this means cosine theta has to be negative a half. And over here, cosine theta is positive 1. Cosine is negative a half, and I'm going to look at my unit circle. Negative a half at 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. <coughs> and, it's, um, and it's 1 at 0. So at this point, now that we've found both the, the spots where both dy d theta and dx d theta are each equal to zero, we have to look for doubles. And at theta equals zero, we have a repeat. So that means we don't know what's going on at theta equals zero. Um, and before we finish the rest of it, I just want to let's take a look at the graph. And what does it mean when theta is equal to zero? So at theta equals zero, at theta equals zero, like that's where the, the angle is just like right on the positive x. So like that's this piece right here, where this curve just sort of like folds in on itself. Then dy d, d, dx is not actually defined. Like there's not a single um, tangent line that can be drawn. You can draw a bunch of lines that intersect only at that one point. It's, um, it's like a cusp, and the dy dx is never defined there. So that's sort of like, you kind of see analytically how this sort of thing shows up, how that kind of behavior shows up when we look at what those derivatives are. So the last thing we're going to do is just find these where these horizontal and vertical tangents lie. So. Let's see, the dx d theta is 0. That will give us vertical tangents. So let's look at those vertical tangents. We'll find r. And again, we're going to use the curve that they gave us. So 2 times 1 minus cosine theta. So um, 2 times 1 minus cosine theta when theta equals pi. Cosine pi is negative 1. 
So that's 1 minus a negative 1, which is 2 times 2 is 4. Pi equals pi over 3. Cosine pi over 3 is a half. So that would be 2 times a half, or 1. And then theta equals 5 pi over 3. Cosine of 5 pi over 3 is a half again, so this is 1. So that means that we have vertical tangents at these three points. For the horizontal tangents, we're going to do the same thing for these, now just these two values. So when theta is 2 pi over 3, cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative a half. So that's 1 minus negative a half is 3 halves times 2 is 3. And when theta is 4 pi over 3. And cosine of 4 pi over 3 is still negative 1 half, so. Oops. So we get uh, horizontal tangents at these two points. How's that? On Friday, we're going to do some areas uh, by with polar coordinates. And that's pretty fun. Um, but until then, uh, have fun with these exercises. Let me know if you have questions on the assignment. Um, and I'll see you all again on Wednesday.